In section 12.6, we'll be focusing on finding the volume of spheres. After watching this video, you will be able to find both the volume of a sphere as well as the volume of a hemisphere. But instead of just simply giving you the formula to find the volume of a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed, with r being the radius of the sphere, we are going to prove this formula. We could use calculus to prove this formula, but since we're not quite there yet, we will use Archimedes' ideas. This was before calculus, but he did use some ideas of calculus within this proof. He said, let's try enclosing the top half of the sphere in a cylinder. And this cylinder is going to have a radius of r, which is the same as the sphere, and a height of r, since half of the sphere is completely enclosed in the cylinder. He noticed something particular about the space outside of the top half of the sphere inside of the cylinder, so this yellow space here. Using similar ideas of volume like we did before with the sheets of paper, he said at a height of x, the slice of the cylinder is a circle of radius r, while as a slice of the sphere at the same height would be a circle of a smaller radius. So right here I'm outlining the slice of the cylinder with a circle of radius r, and right here I am highlighting a slice of the sphere at that same height in which we'll have a circle of a smaller radius. So the space outside of the sphere would be the ring between these two circles. So he said, can we maybe find the area of that ring? Well, he recognized that we could create a right triangle here. He said, at some height x, we have that ring. And he noticed that we can also construct another radius here, going to the outer edge of the smaller circle. He said, let's find the radius of that smaller circle, because we know the radius of the larger circle is r, but the radius of the smaller circle can be found by using Pythagorean theorem. I'm using y to find that radius. So he said we could take our leg squared plus leg squared and set it equal to our hypotenuse squared. And we get that the radius of the smaller circle is the square root of r squared minus x squared. And in order to find the area of that ring, we have to take the area of the large circle and subtract off the area of the smaller circle. Well, we know that the radius of the larger circle is the same as the radius of the cylinder in the sphere. So it's just r. So we could find the area of the large circle by doing pi r squared. As you can see, I'm highlighting it here on the diagram. So to find the area of the large circle, we're going to do pi r squared, and we're going to subtract off the area of the smaller circle with the radius of the square root of r squared minus x squared. Well, squaring that square root will just eliminate that square root symbol and reduce it. So we're just left with pi times the quantity of r squared minus x squared for the area of our smaller circle. Let's distribute the pi. And then our pi r squares will eliminate, and we're just left with pi x squared, which is going to be the area of our ring. Then he said, let's draw some cylinder with the same radius r and the same height r. And then from there, he said, let's draw in the line y equals x, which is perfectly diagonal. And we're going to draw it on both sides to make a cone, as you can see here. And he thought, okay, if I went up x inches, just like we did in the diagram above, with the cone, since it's a perfect diagonal line, it's also x inches over, because we have that slope of 1 over 1. This slice at height x is also a circle with a radius x. So he noticed if we were going to fill that up with sheets of paper, just like we thought about in the first one, he said, this slice here within the cone at height x is also a circle with radius x. So let's determine the area of that circle. The area of that circle would also be pi x squared. Using Cavalieri's principle on page 592 in your textbooks, which states that if two solids A and B can be placed with their bases coplanar, and if the area of every cross section, which is what we're working with here, 
of A is equal to the area of every coplanar cross-section of B, then A and B have equal volumes. So what he's seeing here is if we had stacks of paper such that each stack had the same height, which we have here, the same height of R, and each piece of paper had the same area, which is what we have there with the two red pieces of paper, okay, the ring and the circular piece of paper within the cone, then the two figures must have the same volume. So using Cavalieri's principle, we can say that the volume of the cone is equal to the volume of the space outside of the hemisphere within the cylinder. And that's what we're working with here. So let's highlight that. So the space stack, or the rim, is the same as the circle within the cone, which means that the volume, the volume of the above space must equal the volume of the cone here. Well, we know how to find the volume of the cone from a previous video. We know that we take one-third of the area of the base, which is pi r squared, times the height. Well, the height of this cone is r, so we're doing one-third pi r squared times r. And the radius of this cone is also r, since it's the same as the cylinder, which encloses it. Which leaves us for the volume of the cone to be one-third pi r cubed which means that one-third pi r cubed is the volume of the space above, since they have the same volume. Well, this is beautiful now because it can help us find the volume of our hemisphere. We can use subtraction to do so. So to find the volume of our hemisphere, we could take the volume of the cylinder that encloses it and subtract off the volume of the space surrounding it, since we now know the volume of the space. We could find the volume of the cylinder based off of prior knowledge. We take the area of the base and multiply it by the height. Well, the area of the base is pi r squared, since it's a circle, times the height of r. And we're subtracting off the volume of the space in which we found to be one-third pi r cubed. So we're doing pi r cubed minus one-third pi r cubed. Well, we're doing 1 pi r cubed minus 1 third pi r cubed, which leaves us with 2 thirds pi r cubed for the volume of the hemisphere. But we want to find the volume of a sphere, so we just have to double that. So the volume of any sphere can be found by using the formula 4 thirds pi r cubed. And the volume of any hemisphere can be found by using the formula 2 thirds pi r cubed. We'll pick back up with the second part of the notes in just a moment to do some further example problems.